Hi, Shades. A little slow tonight, ain't it? <laughs> yes, Mr. The Death Meddler. What will it be? Well, I'm awfully glad that you asked that because I just happen to have two 20s and two 10s right here in my pocket. So here's the deal. You slip me a bottle of Shevitz and an ice cold stein. You can't do that, can you? Sadly, we are all out of beer today, but I'll make it up to you. Mountain Dew, Code Red. On the house. <sighs> I like you, Shades. I always liked you. Best goddamned bartender of Timbuktu to Salem, Massachusetts. Or Salem, Oregon, for that matter. <sighs> Here's to a miserable Halloween and all the irreparable harm that it's caused me. How are things going, Mr. The Death Meddler? <sighs> things could be better, Shades. Things can be a lot better. I had this Halloween costume all planned up. Invested a lot of money onto it. Next thing you know, I suffer a double hernia and all of that money that I've put to that costume was made for my medical bills. And it was three goddamn months ago! Okay, I would love to hear more of your bitching and moaning about your terrible Halloween, but I was originally here in your psychotic state to remind you that we planned a crossover for Halloween. Wait, what? You know, Billy and Mandy. Oh. 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 Well, what are you waiting for, you dumb dumb? Get to it. Well, first let me finish this and I'll get right to it. It was made by those who are dead. And the dead came. God, I gotta lay off on that absinthe. Hey everybody, this is Atticus, the Death Metaler, and welcome to a very special episode of the Death Metaler Cinemas. Happy Halloween, everybody. Halloween happens to be one of my favorite holidays, along with Christmas and Thanksgiving. And who better to celebrate it with than my good friend, Ranter and Shades. Hey guys, Ranter and Shades here, exercising my first amendment rights vlog style. Happy Halloween yourself, my good sir. And on this video, we are doing a top 10 list of one of my favorite shows growing up as a child, the Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy. The whole show revolves around the adventures of an idiot boy named Billy, a sociopathic girl named Mandy, and the Grim Reaper himself. Here the trio embark on crazy adventures together, getting into weird, wacky, and hilarious situations together. I loved how this show was just over the top and hilarious. So many memorable episodes that made me laugh so hard or scared the shit out of me. This show, along with many other shows, played an important role in my childhood. I never watched too much Cartoon Network when I was a kid, but after Ed, Ed, and Eddie, The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy was my favorite. There were a bunch of funny gags, mostly involving Billy, funny characters, interesting situations, and was overall a blast to watch. And with that said, my fellow boys, girls, ghouls, ghosties, slashers, and big titty goth girls that don't bitch about Halloween, let us begin the countdown. Number 10. A Dumb Wish happened to be the episode that started off my Billy and Mandy experience back in 2002. In A Dumb Wish, Billy discovers an old genie lamp in Grimm's trunk. When he gives it a rub, he releases the curse Grimm had warned them about. His mom. Because she has been released from the lamp. Grimm's mother agrees to grant them one wish each. Billy wastes his wish by wishing to know what to wish for. Grimm never gets to make his wish because Mandy wishes he and Billy would shut up resulting in literally zipping their lips. So Mandy decides to make her wish to whomever makes her the happiest. It all goes terribly wrong when Grimm and Billy go to a chaotic food fight, pissing off Mandy, resulting in her making her final wish, wishing everyone would vanish. What I loved most about this episode was how Billy and Grimm tried to appease Mandy to the best of their abilities, but keep failing. Especially when Billy writes, Good morning Mandy, love Billy in the snow. That, to me, was the highlight of this episode. 
This may be a shock to you guys watching, but half the episodes Atticus had me watch for this list, it was my first time watching them. Usually when I rewatch Billy and Mandy, I only watch the ones I remember and skip the ones I'm not familiar with, and this episode was no exception. This is the first season, so of course this one's gonna be pretty tame as far as episodes involving Billy meddling with the shit in Grimm's trunk, but I love the Aladdin reference whenever Billy finds the genie's lamp, and I love when Grimm introduces his mom to Billy and Mandy, she's like, Who are these two little uh, monkeys? Uh, uh, these are my friends, Billy and Mandy. Friends? Since when did you ever have friends? Oh! Damn, that'll do something to your self-esteem. And Billy wasting his wish by saying, I wish I knew what to wish for, of course that'll remind everyone of Patrick and Shanghai. Of course, Mandy is sadistic as hell by using her wish to make Billy and Grimm stop talking and having them fight for the last wish. I also like the silent film music that plays when Billy and Grimm throw pies at each other. I do find it kinda dumb that the episode doesn't resolve, nor does Mandy find any endless supplies of pie. But other than that, this is a pretty good episode. Number 9. Get Out of My Head was another classic that I absolutely enjoyed on the show. But it's also scary in a sense because it shows what would happen if someone possessed the power to get inside of your head and control you. Billy learns the technique from Grimm after getting inside milkshakes, Billy's cat. Billy tries it on his dad Harold, but it does not go well. He then tries it on Mandy and where he succeeds. And this is where the fun begins. Billy goes on a whole day inside Mandy doing crazy and dumb shit, like putting underwear on his head and eating caterpillars. But it's also the moment in where we know why Erwin, Billy's friend, has the hots for Mandy later on this series. Hey, Erwin! Uh, uh, hi, Mandy. You are such a cutie! You... you like me? Yeah! You rock! <laughs> Astounding. Everything is fine with our favorite dumbass until he gets out of Mandy's head. Naturally, Mandy is seething with pure anger and Billy bolts out. At the end of the episode, we see that Mandy used a technique on milkshakes to get right back at Billy. The most important lesson to take from this is that you can pick your friends and you can pick your nose. But you cannot pick your friend's nose. If you haven't seen the video Atticus and I did on my channel about Danny Phantom, this episode centers around something we'll be seeing a good bit in that video. Billy's hilarious when he gets inside Mandy's head, especially when he flirts with Erwin. He probably also stretched her jaw muscles by smiling so hard. This episode has more of a resolution than the previous one on the list, and it's probably the best one the episode could have gone with. Mandy taking over Billy's cat milkshakes' his body to get back at Billy is pretty awesome, and as if the episode really needed a moral, her recitation of that you can't pick your friend's nose quote is a good note to end on. Number 8 With any episode involving Jeff the Spider, you are definitely in for a good time. Because Billy's reactions towards Jeff is priceless. But the best one out of all of them happens to be his debut episode, The Crawling Niceness. Billy goes in Grimm's trunk again to get Mandy a soda. But Billy finds an egg in the trunk and hatches a large spider named Jeff. He naturally thinks Billy is his dad, and what we get is possibly one of the most memorable moments of the show. Billy getting very scared of him and tries to squish him, but Jeff, in all honesty, just wants to help his dad. I find it funny as well as tragic where Billy is terrified as well as scared shitless of Jeff. Meanwhile, Jeff is a kind-hearted arachnid that just wants Billy to know that he loves him. The start of a somewhat dysfunctional relationship between father and son. Jeff the Spider has always been one of my favorite recurring characters on the show. In this episode in particular, the interactions between him and Billy are so hilarious yet adorable. Jeff wants so badly to be loved by his dad, but Billy just wants him dead. The scene where Jeff traps Billy in his web is one of the funniest moments between the two of them. Oh, it was nothing, really. I hate you! You hate me? Go get squished, you gross old freako! Squished? Me smash you! Oh, Dad, all I ever wanted to do was make you happy. And I also love how towards the end of the episode, Jeff calls an exterminator just to make Billy happy. Spider's little daddy and his appearance in Keeper of the Reaper are also great Jeff moments, but this episode never ceases to get a laugh out of me. Also, whenever I meet someone around my age named Jeff, I notice I always think of him. Number 7 Shades, 
Yeah, dude. Remember that clown epidemic around in 2016? Oh yeah, that was fun. I think Billy was really onto something. That they were putting chemicals in the water to turn the frogs gay? Wait, that's what Alex Jones was saying, right? No shades to destroy us all! Yes, people. The number seven pick is Attack of the Clowns. In this episode, Billy wakes up from another nightmare involving clowns. He is more terrified than ever towards them. So Mandy and Grimm try to cure him of his clownophobia. First, Mandy asks Grimm to bring a life paper mache clown to entertain Billy, but the spell apparently doesn't work. Then they dress up as clowns in an attempt to look harmless. However, Grimm gets fed up and simply picks him up and starts shaking him, ordering him to stop being afraid of clowns, going into his happy place. He consults with his imaginary inner frat boy, who changes his feelings from being afraid to being angry at clowns, and attacks them with Grimm's sight. In the end, Billy is apparently cured of his fear. What I took from heart from this episode is that we are all afraid of something in our lives, yes. But deep down inside of us, we have our inner frat boy to help us conquer our fears. But even the douchiest of frat boys could not cure me of my number two pick, which is later on to this video. It may seem like most people know this episode for Billy screaming about how the clowns were gonna do what a certain demon used to base his persona around. But rest assured, this episode has plenty of funny moments outside of that gag. The scene in the beginning where Billy and Harold both come downstairs with dirty bedsheets is so perfect. And Billy snatching Grimm's scythe to fight the clowns also makes me giggle. It's not exactly uncommon for someone to be afraid of clowns. In fact, I've always kind of found that to be more hilarious than the clowns themselves. At the end of the day, they're just weirdos with makeup and big noses that like being all acrobatic and silly. Though I will say that paper mache clown Grimm tries to bring to life does have a pretty creepy face. Also, 4 plus 1 equals moo, you can't change my mind. They want to be the dominant species on the planet, and they'll destroy us all to make it happen! Destroy us all! Destroy us all! Destroy us all! Destroy us all! Number six. In this day and age, there are a lot of cursed artifacts and tombs that plague our Earth. Annabelle the doll, Robert the doll, King Tut's tomb, Timur the Great's tomb, and with our number six pick, the Tricycle of Terror. Billy crashes his bike onto a tree, and he goes inside a strange supernatural porter potty where he meets a mysterious boy who gives him a free tricycle. While Billy loves his tricycle, which he calls Trikey, he is also mocked for it by Erwin, Puddin, and Spurg. Because of this, Trikey moves on his own and attacks the three of them. Later, Mandy realizes the problem with Trikey, and Grimm confirms that he is cursed. Billy realizes that Trikey is evil, and he lets Mandy destroy him once and for all. What I found hilarious was a very clever Easter egg on Spurg's part, where it shows the iconic sidewalk that ends, paying an homage to Shel Silverstein's Where the Sidewalk Ends. And of course, Trikey's vengeance upon Spurg. It was one of the most hilarious yet disturbing moments of the show that I thoroughly enjoyed. My favorite aspect of this episode has always been Sir Raven. He is such an awesome narrator, especially at the end when he calls us nerds with nothing better to do, along with his random outbursts. DO NOT CRY! Again, Billy is great in this episode, and I love how oblivious he is to the fact that he's too old to be riding a tricycle. And the way Trikey gets revenge on the people who made fun of it sets the story apart as being pretty unique, especially when it looks like Spurk is getting raped. Yes, rape jokes can be funny, this is an example of a really good one. Another really funny part is when Mandy asks where Billy got Trikey and he says, From a weird kid in a magic porta potty, why do you ask? This episode's great and is definitely one of my favorites. <laughs> Five. Atticus, has anyone ever told you that you kind of look like the Pokemon Go kid? Really? Do you play Pokemon Go every day? Oh yes, dude! Especially when I do it with Joey Ebola salads! With her boob coming out? If you can ask any 90s millennial today, I guarantee you they will tell you the anime that they grew up with and were very fond of was Pokemon. Dragon Ball Z would be a close second. But Billy and Mandy made a very hilarious episode on the Pokemon craze with their parody of the anime, 
Poke Monsters, or it's Pokemon. At the beginning of the episode, Billy and Erwin are in a heated Pokemon card battle, and they get Grimm to bring their cards to life. They go out and challenge some kids to a Pokemon battle, and they are horrified to realize that the monsters are real. It isn't long until everyone in Endsville comes to Grimm to bring their cards to life, but it all goes horribly wrong when all of the Pokemon come to life and terrorize Endsville. Manny decides to take matters in her own hands, creating her own Pokemon, Mandy's Monster, granting it the power to turn all the others to toast. I love this episode because it paid homage to one of my favorite animes growing up, and seeing it in a comedic sense made me laugh my ass off, especially the very beginning of the episode. A guy booger eater, a liver breath drooler, a big dumb wiener head, hell blast those dango! Plus, it just goes to show our desires of having a real Pokey or Pokemon would cause national security to this country with our battles. Apart from the first Pokemon movie being the first movie I ever saw in a theater, to my knowledge anyway, Pokemon was never something I was that huge into. Didn't watch too much of the anime as a kid, never got into the trading card game. I didn't even get into the Pokemon Go craze because I was that adamant about not wanting to come off as a poser. At the very least, I can say I respect Pokemon for standing the test of time as a cultural phenomenon. It's just not something I claim to be enthralled with. Much like when South Park did an episode parodying Pokemon, this episode is also pretty humorous with its portrayal of kids who take the shit really seriously. And I'll bet at some point in our childhoods, whenever we dabbled in Pokemon, we've dreamt of our favorite Pokemon existing in real life. Hell, that's the main thing I appreciated about Pokemon Go. But like with Pokemon Go, eventually the novelty wears off and everything starts to seem annoying. Number four. <sighs> Shades. Yes? You know what this video is really lacking? What is it lacking? It's really lacking something very important, something crucial. It needs a little bit of, um, what is it, what is it, it needs something, oh yeah, oh yeah! CHAOS! 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 Yes, people, the number four pick is the classic episode, Creating Chaos. When Billy and Mandy and Grimm go fishing, Eris, the goddess of chaos, gets Billy to help her use her apple of discord to create chaos after her father, who knowingly in Greek mythology has gotta be Zeus, the biggest fuckboy ever, grounded her. Billy becomes distracted with his own idiotic errands, like for instance, letting the dogs out, which to be frank here, I think he was beating off in the bathroom. All that leading to Eris to go insane, in the end, Billy finally decides to start creating chaos, but Eris is already too altered that she runs away. What I loved most about this episode was on how over the top and hilarious it was with Billy moaning at the beginning of the fishing trip to letting the dogs out and borderline molesting Eris, riding her like a cowboy. Honestly, that scene was kind of messed up in a way. Oh, Eris, that feisty goddess of chaos. She just wants to create some chaos without having to do it herself. And of course, Billy is just wonderful. It's hilarious how much he's making Eris impatient by coming up with more things he has to do before he can do anything chaotic and destructive. And as a result, the chaos comes in the form of Billy doing such mundane things that he ends up torturing Eris. I also like when Billy moans about being bored fishing and the camera zooms out, alluding to a huge echo, but it cuts back to Billy repeating the word bored. When I was a kid, that was a gag I always found funny in various cartoons, since Billy and Mandy is by no means the only show to use that gag. This is definitely a good Eris episode, though some better ones do come later in the series, like Complete and Utter Chaos, aka Billy Gets Dumber, Happy Huggy Stuffy Bears, The Firebird Suite, and Guess What's Coming to Dinner. Number 3 In this day and age, every guy of the millennial generation bitches about wanting their own big titty goth girlfriend. But in Grimm's case, he has a big booty goth girlfriend in Grimm and Love. In this episode, Grimm falls for a purple-skinned, big booty Dita Von T's lookalike named Malaria, and the two instantly hit it off. Throughout the first big portion of this episode, Grimm is just having the best time of his life with this girl, and honestly, the happiest he's ever been in the entire show. That is until Mandy asks Grimm if he has revealed himself as death to her. Grimm of course has not and is confident knowing that she would still love him as the Grim Reaper. The following night, Grim and Malaria are at a club and decide to do a dance off while trying to scare each other, till Grim wins, literally sending her screaming out the door revealing himself as the Grim Reaper. What I really loved most about this episode was how Grim was absolutely happy on the first half the happiest he has ever been with this woman. Because throughout the show, Grimm is treated like shit by Billy and Mandy. And to see him have this little moment in his life 
was just beautiful for him. What I take to heart from this episode is that when it comes to trying to fall for the opposite sex, it's just to be yourself. Be yourself, be yourself. I don't want to be myself. Because in the long run, trying to be something that you are not is definitely a turn down. Like the one episode of All Grown Up where Chucky was trying to impress this one girl in the most cringy way possible. But yeah, just be yourself when it comes to dating someone that you like. And if they can't love you for who you are, well then that's their problem, they can go fuck off. There is definitely plenty of fish out there in the sea, people. Yes, we've all seen the memes this episode spawned. Yeah, 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 big titty golf GF, all right. The part that jumps out at me is when Grimm and Malaria are at the restaurant, and when Malaria asks Grimm how he can tell when someone fakes, he answers, Trust me, I know. And then we get a reference of that famous I'll have what she's having scene from When Harry Met Sally. Which, fun fact, I've actually eaten at that restaurant my first time going to New York City. Grimm and Malaria are indeed pretty adorable together, though at the same time I feel it's a bit played out. I do like the way Grimm reveals to Malaria that he's the actual Grim Reaper, like she expected all the creepy shit they've been seeing was all fun and games. The music that plays during the dance contest is also pretty cool. This episode might not be a favorite of mine, but for others it's definitely a standout for them, and I respect that. <laughs> Number two. Hey Atticus, you okay? If you guys remember my traumatic childhood memories video, you would know that this was my number one pick for that video. I'll link it in the description below if you want to watch. But for the sake of this video, I will bring up the episode that was responsible for the most fucked up nightmare I had when I was young. Tickle me, Mandy. This episode was legendary for absolutely making me shit my pants when I was young. The whole plot behind the episode was Mandy was going on a vacation for one day, causing Billy to have separation anxiety from Mandy leaving him. So Grimm decides to have the alternative for Billy till Mandy gets back, making a new Mandy out of some toys that Billy owns. And Billy automatically feels super uneasy being around new Mandy. It isn't until he goes to bed where the most fucked up scene happens. <laughs> I saw this episode at the later days of fifth grade, and I can remember the first time I saw this, I was terrified when I saw that gritty look of horror on Billy's face. That face haunted me like a Vietnam War veteran going through a PTSD episode all throughout the fifth grade till my freshman year in high school. Yeah, that scene was that scarring. But as I got older, I buried that trauma, thinking I would forget it until I made my video on that stuff that scarred me as a kid. Nothing really must say about this episode, but the fact that it fucked me up so bad. Being lonely does suck, but if only Billy just did something else to entertain himself while Mandy was away, since she wasn't going to be away for long anyway. The new Mandy is creepy as fuck, and it's interesting how she's even more creepy than the actual Mandy. I think what makes new Mandy so creepy is how annoying she is with trying to get Billy to play with her. She's like that young relative that really likes you and wants to spend time with you, but you just aren't in the mood or you want to do something else. Tickle Me Mandy does stand out for how overall creepy the flow and structure of the episode is. I wouldn't say I was as fucked by it as Addy, but I did find find it to be one of the more intriguing episodes. Before we get down to our number one pick, here are a few honorable mentions on this list. The first honorable mention is the problem with Billy. In this episode, it is explained why Billy is a lovable dumbass that we all grown to love. According to Harold, Billy is considered a genius because he moves around by blowing gas as a small baby, dubbing him a genius by farting. Wow, we got ourselves a regular Terrence and Phillip. But the real problem with Billy is of course, Harold himself. The apple really does not fall from the tree. Shades, what do you have to say about this? Tuxedo Man! The second honorable mention is Little Pork Chop. I loved how in the beginning of this episode, Billy is super vocal at Harold, not wanting to fish with him. But in creating chaos, he begs to go on the fishing trip with Grim and Mandy, only then to bitch and moan. 
So the gang decides to have Billy visit the pet store and get his own fish. He gets a small fish and names it Little Pork Chop. Billy loves his little fish, but wishes it was bigger. Grim goes soft and gives Pork Chop some easy grow, making Pork Chop into a massive Austrian accented fish. Throughout the episode, Billy does nothing but straight up deprive him of any water to sustain himself, like having him bake out in the hot sun, getting in a tanning booth, and the final blow, eating spicy food, reducing him to ash. Billy feeling shitty for killing Porkchop flushes him down the toilet and where later Harold comes back with a resurrected Porkchop as a result of the toxic lagoon out at Ennsville. I find it very funny at the beginning that Billy is very vocal on how Fish are friends. Not food. Yet treats pork shop like shit without even noticing. Billy is absolutely horrible to pork shop, and it's so fucking funny. This is the kind of animal abuse, animal rights activists, whatever your ass handed to you over. The part when Billy gets a fucking tanning bed for pork shop is insanely awful, and he's so oblivious to how bad this is for him when fish need water to survive. The third honorable mention is Dream Mutt. Another episode in where Billy is a horrible pet owner besides having his cat milkshakes. Billy wants a dog while at the pet store and cannot decide which dog to get. So Grimm decides to fuse all the dogs into one Hanna-Barbera looking dog named Willy Jiggy Jed. He mostly speaks in rhymes and loves discussing things like telling Billy he likes cockroaches and vomit. And he often tells jokes with a laugh track and signals to the audience when he wants him to stop. But eventually their friendship comes to an end when Billy says he can't sleep in his bed and makes him sleep outside. He eventually begins using a plan to using a giant robot to steal every bed in town so he'll have a new place to sleep every night. Billy, Mandy, and Grimm decide to stop him by using a magic gelatin that dissolves him, leaving only his hat and tie behind, which Billy takes. What I loved about this episode was how every time Wiggly Jiggly Jed walked, you just hear silly cartoon noises going around. Also, the biggest question right up there where Rolf from Ed, Ed, and Eddie is from is how the fuck is Harold a former Navy SEAL? This is another one of my all-time favorites. Wiggy Jiggy Jed is pretty funny, and the way he and Billy interact with each other, just walking around with huge-ass giggly smiles on their faces and occasionally saying, You're my best friend! is so heartwarming. I want my Fenway! But the episode then takes a turn for the batshit when Jed builds that giant robot that steals beds. And you wanna know why this is so funny? Wow. All this cause I wouldn't let you sleep in my bed? Yep. <laughs> oh. He's freaking out over literally nothing. Sure, I guess dog houses aren't exactly glamorous, but rules are rules. Also, for some reason, I always found it funny the way Billy says, And the reality show gimmick is pretty funny too throughout the episode. The fourth honorable mention is Chocolate Sailor. Chocolate? Did you say chocolate? Yes, Shades! With a wait, wait, is this going where I think it's going? N no. Okay, Shades, just the off chance you go crazy on me, here's a chocolate bar. We're kind of a bit of a time crunch here. In this episode, Billy sells some chocolate sailors. Except every box he orders, he consumes all the chocolate till he becomes a chocolate sailor, eating himself. Grim and Mandy find the ship where the sailors are stationed to get the antidote for Billy. The captain gives Billy three troubles, one of them the antidote. Billy, of course, eats all of them, resulting in him exploding into fudge. You can definitely tell the premise of this episode was at least inspired by Spongebob. I love how addicted to this chocolate Billy is that he eats all the shit being sent to him. Especially when Harold finds the chocolate on his front step and Billy goes, MINE! It's also pretty off the wall the way he ends up turning into chocolate and eating more and more of himself. I can imagine Chocolate Boy from Hey Arnold doing a similar thing had he not found a new love in radishes. The third honorable mention is Nigel Planter and the Chamber Pot of Secrets. I loved how in this show they ripped off Harry Potter and this episode pays homage to the second book in the Harry Potter series, The Chamber of Secrets. Here in this episode, Nigel seeks help from our lovely trio against his arch nemesis, Lord- DON'T! What, dude? If you say his name, shit will happen. You mean Lord Moldybutt? God damn it. God damn it indeed. The mere mention of his name causes shit to break, or ISIS militants to blow themselves up. Along the episode, Mandy and Grimm try to learn where he who should not be named is hiding, while Billy fucks around instead of protecting Nigel. At the climax, we learn that it was Dean Toadblatt who disguised himself as he who should not be named, and the day is saved. What I loved most about this episode was how it was made crystal clear not to say his name, but Billy being the idiot he is, says it anyway, causing shit to break. 
It was absolutely comical. Yeah, Harry Potter is another one of those things that everyone seems to love that I'm just not as enamored with. And no, it has nothing to do with how progressive J.K. Rowling is. But yeah, the gags with Billy saying, You mean Lord Moldy Butt? That name and shit collapsing are the best parts of this episode. Something I've always noticed about the episodes featuring Nigel Planter is that everyone seems to have it out for him over at Toad Blatt's. He's just everyone's punching bag. He's basically Atticus whenever I'm on Skype with him. Just kidding, I love you bro. Of course the parts with Billy having a dog's ass for a nose and naming it Winky are cute. And when Mandy reveals Toad Blatt to be the perpetrator, it's batshit as hell and absolutely contrived working with the police and the FBI. And the final honorable mention is Duck. We all had our moments in our lives where we could not take it anymore to keep our farts intact. And we just rip one out and suffer the embarrassment. Or chemical warfare. But just imagine if you didn't have the urge to fart and had a ghost duck with a pickle hopper on his head making fart noises. This is the whole plot behind Duck. This ghastly, ghostly drake prowls around Ensville, seeking innocent victims making fart noises till they get in serious troubles with the law. Grim being the first victim, Erwin being the second, and Harold being the third, only to have multiple other people locked up, especially Hector con carne. I'm not even on this stupid show anymore. It is when the duck meets Mandy and where he makes a piss poor decision to pick Mandy as his next victim. And we all know how intimidating Mandy is. One thing I want to point out before I get into things here is the reference to Once in a Lifetime by the Talking Heads at the beginning during Grimm's sitcom-y dream. Poor Grimm, he just can't catch a break with that duck in the first half of the episode, and the problem just transfers to other characters. And yeah, ever since General Scar became a recurring character on the show and Scarred for Life, I've always found the cameos the Evil Con Karn characters make to be really amusing. Dude! Baby, why you gotta be nasty? And number one. And the number one pick for this video is... Battle of the Bands. This episode is not only one of the most funniest episodes, but the most important episode that made me the man that I am today. In this episode, Billy plays a game of hide and seek till he stumbles upon Ensville's hottest band. <laughs> Basically, Spurg's band. Billy wants to try out, but fails. But Spurg catches an eye on Grimm and lets Grimm try out an epic guitar solo, destroying the neighborhood. Billy, devastated about not being on Purple Filth, turns over to his father for help. Instead of trying out for the Battle of the Band show, the duo are up in the crowd, Harold looking like Paul Stanley and Billy as Marilyn Manson. But Harold is not dad on this night, for he is... <laughs> I kind of overdone there, right there. Purple Phil finally gets on stage and we are left with one of the most iconic moments of the entire show. I kid you not, the first time I saw that part, I was crying from laughing so fucking hard. Just the absurdity and the randomness of that scene made it so memorable. Now why do I say this episode played an important role in my life? Ever since I first saw that episode, I was getting my start into the world of rock and metal music, and there is this one quote off of that episode that I indeed took from heart. But what if they don't like me, Mogar? The important thing is that you like you. Just be yourself. And you can't lose. It was that word of advice from Mogar that I really took from heart. When I enter every metal show, I always carry that same spirit and energy that Mogar proudly displayed. Minus the flying. If you've never heard of the band SPF 1000, I highly recommend you check them out. They're a short-lived alt metal band who had their song Into the Darkness featured in this episode when Purple Filth plays live. I found out about them when I was curious about the music used in the show and noticed that they had a full album called Witch Hunt that came out in 2003 available on iTunes. You better believe I bought that shit. Not to deviate too much from talking about this episode, but I did the same thing when I found out that the band Greystar from Jimmy Neutron was an actual pop punk band and they had an album that came out in 2006 called Between Dreams and Waking. Yes, I'm that much of 
a nostalgic dork. Surprised. But anyway, yes, Battle of the Bands is an awesome episode, and it's highly enjoyable if you're either a musician or someone who just loves rock and metal music. Apart from SPF 1000's feet, one of my favorite parts in the episode is when Billy makes a really stupid pun based on Play That Funky Music White Boy by Wild Cherry, and then Grimm says, Well... I did used to play that Stairway to Heaven ting in high school. Ugh, as if that song wasn't overplayed enough by guitarists. And he ends up shredding so hard he burns the town down. This may or may not have also played a part in how I got into the band Grim Reaper as well. Overall, this might not be my personal pick for my favorite episode of Billy and Mandy, but it is for sure one of the all-time best. Well, that about wraps it up with this top 10 list of my favorite Billy and Mandy episodes. What were your favorite episodes? Leave them down on the comments below. And before I end this video, I have to mention two things. Number one, I like to thank my absolute awesome friend, Ranter and Chase, for helping me out on this video. You're welcome, Bay. And number two, I did a similar video on his channel where I helped him out on his top 10 list of Danny Phantom. So please check it out. Without further ado, ladies and gents, I am Atticus the Death Metaler. Hope you liked this video. Subscribe to my channel. Links are in the description below. Keep it metal, and have a happy and safe Halloween, y'all. <laughs> now that's what I call Halloween spirit. <laughs> <laughs>